A lot of people think that since it's associated with radioactive enrichment, uh, that it's a radiation problem out there, and in reality, it's a uh, chemical problem where the uh, trichloroethylene uh, got into the groundwater below the plant. And so you can imagine that at, um, at a site like Paducah, built in the 50s, with a vast, you know, array of machinery, parts, pieces uh, in the production area, that um, uh, we consumed massive amounts of solvent. In this case, it was TCE because that was the predominant solvent of the time. The TCE contamination in the groundwater, uh, as I think is, is relatively common knowledge now, came from some of the activities in the C400 building where they would clean the equipment. Uh, and uh, the TCE was a very commonly used and accepted uh, cleaning degreasing agent uh, back in the 1960s and 70s and they used extremely large quantities of it to clean the extremely large equipment that they brought to the C400 building. Most of that work we had a facility, a maintenance facility specifically built to do all this work in. It was our C400 uh, facility and so it's not a surprise that our biggest, um, I'll say, impact for uh, groundwater is trichloroethylene uh, solvent. And its uh, primary origin, you know, for the most part, is the C400 building. When you recognize that, that the contamination issue uh, around the plant is one of chemical contamination in the groundwater, then that's the the issue you got to focus on. And so obviously that's what the CAB wants to focus on as well, uh, you know, support the DOE decision to, to uh, try to remediate the groundwater contamination first since that was really the biggest contamination issue at the plant. So in 1988, we were alerted by uh, our residents, our, our fence line neighbors, that uh, they had worries about their groundwater. And upon investigation, we found uh, trichloroethylene uh, in some of the residents' water nearby. That uh, was, a, was a big event for us because before that time, we really had no indication that we had an issue there. Uh, that prompted uh, some pretty uh, immediate action on our part. So the idea is we've got to get people off their private wells in the sense of getting an alternate water supply. And that's where it began and uh, soon after that, uh, we put some agreements in place to actually uh, go to public water. And so we ran water supply lines uh, out uh, to the residents because we were trying to figure out the extent of what this contamination was. We also realized that, well, we've got to clean up the groundwater that's out there. After that, we began negotiating with EPA and the state of Kentucky about installing uh, groundwater extraction wells, uh, basically a pump and treat system. And the idea was, was to put the extraction wells off site, outside the fence, in these groundwater subsurface uh, contamination areas, pump the groundwater to the surface, and actually bring it back on site for treatment uh, here at the pump and treat facility. And so from the community's point of view, you know, we look at their uh, contamination maps of the groundwater and it sort of dissipates as it, as it is diluted and goes farther away from the source. And so uh, that's where they were doing a lot of the pump and treat. They were at the periphery of the, of the uh, plant boundaries to make sure that they could try to prevent that from getting into the adjacent neighbors. Uh, groundwater sources and whatnot, but but I think uh, you know from the standpoint of the community, if you can get it back at the source, uh, then all the outlying concentrations are going to be reduced subsequently, and and that'll improve uh, all the groundwater for everybody in the neighborhood. The way the subsurface here is at the site is it actually goes down vertical uh, through the upper 60 feet of strata. It's about 55, 60 feet, and it will go straight down vertically. And then it goes into the aquifer, which is much more fast moving groundwater, which is horizontal. And it goes horizontal to the north from the site. And so the 
So any contamination that gets in the ground, it will go down and then immediately start heading north once it hits the aquifer. What the extraction well does, if we put a well in, is you put the well down where the contamination is, it pulls it into the well, and it actually draws it up into the well to be treated, and all the while it's reducing the amount of contamination and the concentration level uh, that's in the aquifer where you put the well. And so really that was the beginning of trying to clean uh, the site up. Once the Department of Energy discovered that they had the TCE groundwater contamination, they were always limited by what they could do uh, because it was an active plant where they were still actively enriching uranium. You know, they were doing what they could within the constraints of having an operational plant there that needed the use of the building for its day-to-day -day cleaning activities. One of the first things uh, DOE had to do was identify the extent of the problem, and so they've come up with a map that shows from all their uh, many uh, dozens and dozens of monitoring wells exactly where the TCE has migrated to in the groundwater and they all sort of point back to uh, that C400 building. Whenever you you look at that and, and everything points back to there as the ultimate source if you want to resolve the problem you go to the source. CAB obviously agreed with them that you know let's go to the source and, and see if we can at least identify the extent of the problem under the C400 building or very close to it and uh, see if we can you know start some sort of treatment there where the concentrations may be higher than anywhere else. So when we began to come back on site and do that source remediation we installed electrical resistance heating uh, which would volatilize the the contaminants the TCE and the idea was to bring it to the surface the electrical resistance heating uh, was able to remove many, many, many gallons of the trichloroethane. And so having that knowledge, we were able to actually go in and do additional electrical resistance heating that removed another large volume uh, of the contaminants from the site. Uh, so once uh, the uranium enrichment uh, stopped, uh, then they could go in and sort of go full bore on trying to uh, identify the source of that TC contamination and see if they could actually uh, get more access to uh, where the concentration was the highest. And we took that time uh, that we got the plant back, again no longer uh, operating the plant for enrichment purposes, and uh, we worked with the regulator to, uh, to reprioritize our environmental cleanup efforts at the site. And of course, um, you know, we all wanted to focus on the C400. Uh, it's our principal source of off-site contaminants um, and a principal source of our primary contaminant, trichloroethylene. And it led to our, our focus on what we call the C400 city block approach, where we isolate uh, essentially the primary source of, of our uh, TCE um, you know, contaminant of concern. And we start working in place to put, uh, to do what we call our um, our medial investigation study and then a feasibility study and we're currently in the process of working with the regulator to come up with a set of uh, remedy alternatives that uh, we then plan on implementing to uh, to address you know the C400 uh, subsurface contamination you know going uh, into the future. Because the idea is we are now ready to come back to all the hot spots that are just outside the building or under the building uh, and look at the different technologies to do a once-for-all cleanup at C400. The uh, Paducah uh, Citizens Advisory Board works very well with the local Department of Energy people, I think, and vice versa. We, we look at it from the community's point of view. How's it going to impact the community? Is it going to improve the environmental contamination issues? And is it going to happen in a timely manner? And, and so our mission responsibility here is to clean this place up to acceptable standards in concert with the regulator and with also the public. And we've been doing this since the 80s. So now we are looking at, uh, you know, to the future, to continue the efforts, to continue the focus, to continue this cleanup until we're done.